guys, this is Tara with Kitten Sweets and Tarot, and today I'm jumping in with my August faves 2019. Oh my gosh, is it already September? Oh! <laughs> August was really crazy. <laughs> a lot going on in August, as well as there will be a lot going on in September. Um, you know, I, of course, you know, have to run my my spiritual biz, you know, with my healings, my tarot readings, you know, my saps that I make and my sprays and uh, selling of my Wally's World Oracle, which got printed over the summer and has been doing really well. And I'm so glad that Wally's World actually gets to travel the world, <laughs> you know, to all different parts of the world. Uh, people have uh, purchased this deck and uh, you can find it on my shop, uh, www.kittensweightsandtarot.com. There is a link to take you to my Wally's World Oracle. Um, but you know, a lot of other things have been going on. Uh, school started up again. I'm a teacher. I'm a high school teacher. I'm a track and field coach, although track and field will not start until the spring. So, you know, I kind of, I don't have to do that right now. Um, but I do a few other things, you know, I'm an opera singer, you know, so, uh, there is an opera that I am preparing for called Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> uh, you know, in French. So I have to brush up on my French and my French is not that good but at least I have a couple of friends who are actually here on YouTube, uh, Wasi Magic and, uh, well, Wasima, and uh, my friend Steph over at Journal du Femme et Spiritual Steph, uh, Journal du Femme Moderne et Spiritual Steph, <laughs> and, um, and she's out in Belgium. Uh, but I also have a second opera that I am preparing for, and that will start in September. So I'm gonna be doing like dual rehearsals so one of the operas will take place in September and then the other opera is going to take place the first week of or first and second week of October. So things are crazy with that. So not only do I have like my muggle job, but I have my spiritual job and now I got my opera going on. So there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so things were pretty full, which means that I don't have a ton of things here for my faves. Um, but that's not to say I didn't have faves, you know, because I, I, my life is my fave. <laughs> you know, I am very grateful and very thankful uh, to be so busy, to be able to have, you know, contracts with operas and to be able to have, uh, you know, a job that I can go to every day and to be able to run a spiritual biz and to be able to have my two little boys, you know, my furry boys, uh, Loki and Wally and my dude and, you know, to have... I am, I'm very blessed. So, um, let's jump into it. My garden is always a fave of mine and I have been doing a lot of yard work, uh, this past summer, uh, taking out the weeds and basically helping a lot of my plants flourish and grow. And my roses, which as you know, are a big deal to me, you know, I have them in my Wally's World deck. Uh, I use them in healings, but I have recently created a salve and, um, I'm so smitten with the salve. It's my first beauty salve that I've ever created. I've made the healing salves before, but this one I've never really like made for specifically for the face, which I have it on right now. <laughs> um, but it's called my Goddess of the Rose um, salve. It's a beauty salve. This one is the one that I'm using. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of been used a little bit, but all you need basically when you're putting it on your face is like literally like that much like that's all you need um actually i'm put a little bit more on right now because why not um it has a faint smell of rose to it um which is pretty awesome <laughs> so i mean when i'm putting it on i'm like oh my roses it smells so nice so you just kind of rub it in <sighs> and just like inhale the it smells so good, but you know, my skin is really oily. Like I have, a, I have really oily skin. And so I was like, I didn't know how my salve was going to work on my skin. Uh, but it works really well since, I mean, I'm, I'm a little drier on the cheeks, but I have like definite like T-zone, uh, oiliness and the roses have just, uh, I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, but basically I only got to make like 11 of these little jars because it's from my rose garden. So it's completely dependent on my roses and the amount of roses that my rose bushes uh, produce. And I've preferred using my, my red roses for the salve 
Um, so basically, I mean, these are my, my red roses from my garden. Um, I dry them and I, I will make more jars. It's just, you know, I, I like to use my roses for other things. So I don't want to use up all my rose petals, like just making my beauty salve. So I only made like a little, uh, like 11 jars. And I think I have like five or six left in my Etsy shop, which you can, you know, go check out. And I'll, I have a link down below if you're interested. Uh, but I also pulled the rose hips uh, from my garden as well. So my beauty salves are made from my rose petals and my rose hips. And then, you know, I use a, a beeswax to um, solidify it. And I have, you know, a couple other things in there like shea butter, jojoba oil, um, vitamin E, and then that's it. Like it's, it's really simple ingredients and it's like, you know, and I my, you know, and I think the less that I have going on my skin, the better. Um, and where I work at the high school, I actually, I don't have windows. I work below ground. Uh, the rest of the school is above ground, but my classroom happens to be below ground and I'm in the dark <laughs> with fluorescent lighting. Um, and it, it, my skin just gets destroyed during the school year until like track season starts when I can actually like be out in the sun and, and my skin's like, oh God, thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is really helpful. Um, I actually don't get pimples with it, you know, but my skin does get jacked up in pimples when I'm like working below ground, but this has helped keep like my blemishes at bay. It's helping like to like even out my combination skin. It's like actually evening out my skin tone. So yes, I'm like kind of like promoting my stuff, but I'm like super excited because I made something that like really works on my skin. Like you don't know how excited I am. Like, like I made it. <laughs> like I don't need to go to a store and like buy somebody's stuff. Like I'm so excited that like I made it and it's like, uh, I can do it here at home. <laughs> Cause um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I like to save my money if I can. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was super excited that is going to be my forever fave. Thank you, roses. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have saved my skin. I'm always babying my roses and, um, you know, I, I like to, you know, the tea that I have left over when I make herbal tea or, uh, sometimes some of my, my black tea, I, I leave that at the base of my rose bushes because, uh, oftentimes they do like a more acidic soil. So that's why I'll put sometimes the black tea there. Um, and it does help, you know, um, with like, fertilizing and, and all of that, you know, the, the soil around it basically. Um, but over the summer, they, the roses got, um, black spot and I was like, err. And so I had found, uh, through my internet searches, uh, that if I took a cup of milk and two cups of water and put it in a spray bottle just like this and sprayed my roses once a week, um, mostly in the morning. So the leaves have time to dry instead of at night when the leaves would stay you know, damp longer, um, which would only exacerbate like black spot. So I was doing that and I got rid of the black spot and I was so excited. But then I go and I walk out and it looks like my roses are rusting. And I was like, what the heck? So I went online. Turns out it's something called rose rust. I was like, what the deuce, man? So uh, then, you know, I'm always looking for like natural ways to get rid of things, not put chemicals on my roses because if people are using my stuff, my my products to like put it on their faces or on their bodies i don't want chemicals in there so i went online found out if you get non-coated aspirin uh which uh basically the the main ingredient in here is salicylic acid which is what you do to get rid of acne <laughs> You know, things are made with salicylic acid. Um, so, which is why I'm like, oh, that's why it's like a home remedy to like make a paste out of this and put it on your zits. But anyway, you take two tablets, put it into a quart of water, let the two tablets dissolve, spray it on the leaves and the underside of the leaves of your rose bushes once a week. Um, and it starts to get rid of the rose rust. Okay, side effect, didn't know it was steroids for my roses because roses produce uh, small amounts of salicylic acid themselves. That's how, that's their immune system. That's how they get, they fight, you know, insects and disease and things like that. So by spraying a little bit more salicylic acid, which is their natural defense onto them, basically gives them like superpowers. So I swear to the goddess that those rose bushes are a foot taller than they were a week ago. Like it's like every day there's like all these giant leaves and like roses are just boom, 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 just like blooming everywhere. 
<laughs> so, and I found out that you can use that same solution, you know, even when uh, plants aren't like don't have rose rust or black spot, um, but you could put it on roses and you could put it on uh, like nightshades, uh, you know, so like tomatoes and plants and things like that. And apparently it helps them grow bigger, healthier because they have a, a better defense system and it creates like more fruit. And then for the roses, obviously more blooms, but this doesn't work on every plant. So you have to be careful because on some plants that's bad for them. Um, so you always have to do your research, but you know, okay. So those of you that are like into roses and like one, I know like a little something like, uh, this is, uh, steroids basically. No, but it's their, um, you know, it's their natural defense, just giving them a lot more of their natural defense. So I thought that was fascinating. Um, so I even went out there this morning cause I'm always checking on my roses anyway. And I was like, Oh my God, like these leaves weren't there last night. Like <laughs> what, you know? And so since there's a lot more leaves, there's a lot more photosynthesis going on with my roses. And so it's like, it's, you know, it's just all like compiling on top of it. So more photosynthesis, more leaves, more blooms, more, more leaves equals more photosynthesis and yeah and so it's like it's going nuts right now but um yay I'm so glad I found uh, some natural alternatives <laughs> and then another fave that I've had uh, for the month of August is actually this necklace here um and it's I don't know if you can see a little bit of like opal uh, in this little turtle and in, this is a necklace that the dude gave me just before I went back to school in August and it was kind of like a little like good luck thing, you know, kind of like, you know, wear it to know that you're okay when you're at work and, you know, um, just so I can have, you know, good times. But I, I love turtles, specifically sea turtles. Um, maybe it's because I, you know, have grown up in a beach town, you know, my whole life. So, um, but yeah, I, I love me and my turtles. And so I really love this. It kind of, you know, just makes me feel protected. Um, yeah. <laughs> Then four stones for the month of August. Um, I may, I don't know if this is something that I put in for July, but um, I know definitely for August, I'm really into quartz. And so I was digging in my pocket here, but I always keep like a little stone on me. And so this is like a little, little piece of um, polished quartz that I have, uh, but I've been using all different uh, kinds of quartz. Like this one is my Himalayan quartz and I have another Himalayan quartz. Um, so I love all these little quartz clusters. Um, this one is like a clear quartz cluster. I have a lot. I have, you know, um, quartz wands. I have polished quartz. I have raw quartz. I have, um, quartz in spherical form, you know, I, and I, I have some that have been carved into things like, um, and I was super stoked to find out that healingcrystals.com, which is if I'm going to buy online, which I prefer to get crystals in person. Uh, but if I'm going to buy online, that's like the only shop that I go to. I trust them. I trust the people that work there. They're really nice people. I love their little personal notes. You know, when you buy stuff from them, um, they have a YouTube channel, uh, healing crystals. Uh, they also have a Instagram. So it's at healing crystals. Um, and until, December they're having 50% off like the majority of their inventory and the reason for that they're not going out of business but they're trying to get rid of as much of their stuff as possible because they're moving their business from Arizona to Virginia uh, so they can get a bigger warehouse and they and they can have a lower rent and things like that so uh, lower overhead basically um, so yeah they, they want to travel with as little like inventory as possible to make that move so in the process we get to get a lot of crystals on the cheap. So if you want to check that out, I will put their link down below as well. Okay. So the last thing, like I said, it's not a whole lot of stuff, but you know, I've been really busy, so I haven't had a chance to do a lot of stuff except really take care of my garden and play with some crystals. <laughs> that's about it. Um, and my decks, because that's of course a part of my spiritual business. So let's take a look at those decks. So the first deck is my vivid soul Oracle. Well, it's not my deck, but I mean, I, I picked this up <laughs> in August and this is by Jessica Rasmussen. Um, I just did a review video of this. So you will see that review video woo, on Sunday. Since Sundays, I love to post my reviews. But this deck is off the heezy. Um, this was this card. 
was the reason I got this deck. <laughs> Um, but it reads really well. It's really soft. It kind of reminds me of the story cards. Um, and yeah, I just love, I could, I love when you can see like the brush strokes of the paintings and it kind of also, especially with this one, uh, reminds me of the Osho Zen. So it's like a mixture of story cards meets the Osho Zen meets color and awesomeness. <laughs> My next fave is the Sugar and Spice Oracle, which I also got on Etsy. And this one I got sometime over the summer. Uh, I first saw it when my friend Steph, who lives out in Belgium, um, had gotten it. And I was like, ooh, that's really cute. And she's like, I don't know. I mean, it's super girly. She goes, I know you're not that girly. Um, but I ended up really loving it. I know I'm not like a super like girly girl. I'm more of like a tomboy. Uh, but I don't know. I just... I really love the softness of the deck. I really love the cutesy messages. I love the cutesy art. Like, <laughs> it just happens to be right up my alley. And the readings are, like, they're they're really hard hitting, actually. I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll be asking a question, like, patience will come up, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, um, so yeah, this, this is, this is a really good deck. I think it reads really well and yeah, go check it out on, um, Etsy. Just type in sugar and spice Oracle should pop right up. So this is a fave. Then, uh, I have the ice cream Oracle, uh, and this is from the ice cream Oracle.com. And this one was not on Etsy. This was on game crafter. I had to look inside the box. Yeah. So it was game crafter. I did a review of the deck so I've done a review of a lot of decks so just check out my playlist that says deck reviews I think there's like a hundred and I don't know how many deck reviews are on there but <laughs> the, uh, this one should be in the more recent um, reviews but this has been really good for my monthly readings that I do for myself uh, because usually I like to pick a color for the month and I had been using the color gypsies deck of color um, but just to kind of change things up, I've been using this one so that I like that it has a color, but it also has like some keywords and, um, I mean, the deck of color also has keywords, but you know, there's just a little bit more. There's like ice cream in it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been using it for mostly like for chakra, for color, for energy. And yeah, it's, it's a really fun deck to use. It's very simple. Um, but you know, brings out the little kid in me because... I mean, that little kid in me basically runs things, so. <laughs> All right, my other fave of the month has been the Affirmators Tarot. And this one, I think, yeah, I also got in the summertime. It was either in June or July. And I just happened to be trolling the Amazon. <laughs> and I found this deck and I was like, what? And first of all, look at that foil on the back. Um, the cards are oracle size. So these are big cards. So if you have smaller hands, um, you know, it might be a little harder to shuffle. You might want to do a little top shuffle there. Um, but you know, it's not like I palm basketballs for a living, you know, <laughs> I'm not like six foot four. I'm only like five eight, foot eight. But um, anyway, it's got these cute little animals and dragons and so much going on <laughs> and the colors and Oh, it was so hard to set this deck aside so that I could make this video because I was like, I just want to go work with it right now. Um, so I actually worked with it last night. Um, I was doing a healing for somebody. Um, and I think that cause I, I pull cards, like I do a healing, then I pull some cards to kind of see, you know, how on track I am with the healing. And, um, there was a deck that I was using for that, but it has now been replaced by this deck. I think it, it just works a lot better. And I work with animal medicine, so it was just like a no-brainer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Then this deck, the Queen of the Moon Oracle. Again, you know, some of my besties, it's, they're contributing to all my decks. So I've been doing a huge deck purge and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with all those decks because as I'm looking off to the side, there's probably like 30 or 40 decks that I've, um, are going to be gifted or I don't even, even know if I want to bother like selling them or trading them, but just like gifting them or, or something. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But anyway, Queen of the Moon Oracle, uh, by Stacey DeMarco. <sighs> I like, I, I love Stacey DeMarco's work. So I don't know why it took me a while to get this deck. I was like, oh, 
I don't know. That's like, but do I like working with the moon? Yes, I do. Do I like Stacey DeMarco's work? Yes, I do. Do I like the, the art and like the artists that she chooses for her, her decks? Yes, I do. Well then, <laughs> I don't know. Then once I got it, I was like, holy cow, the, um, using it alongside tarot or using it standalone and readings oh, so good um and i've used it already with clients very good with them too uh but now i'm just for now using it as like a way to follow the moon so like for this one waning crescent three you know i will have this card out either on my altar or on my nightstand uh, so that i can kind of go through the deck as i go through the moon cycles and um so i'm just using it that way and then i'm going to go back to using it as an oracle but i think it's been freaking fantastic this other deck i actually saw on simon of the hermit's caves channel and uh, there was somebody who was like have you guys seen this deck and i was like god damn it another deck for the wish list <laughs> Um, but this is the Enchanted Blossoms Oracle, and at first glance, it may look like just flowers and butterflies, but on closer inspection, you realize it's little baby dragons. And I'm like, oh my gosh, because <laughs> I'm already like a flowers and butterflies kind of girl. You know, I love my garden, so therefore I love, you know, the pollinators and the bugs and the <laughs> the birds and the bees. <laughs> everything that's out there um even some of the creepy crawlies spiders probably i could do less of but i know that they're needed somehow <laughs> anyway um but these are the backs of the cards and yes you have this keyword underneath you have the name of the flower and underneath that you have the name of the type of butterfly that it is but you know the butterflies are actually little dragons so i love this deck i love the cards too it's that um super like silky feel like where you, you feel like you're gonna leave fingerprints on it but you're not some some decks that have that silky feel you do leave fingerprints but not on this deck but yeah i just after this video I'll be pulling a card and then of course like <laughs> every month a fave is is going to be my wally's world oracle um and actually with my own oracle deck which you know the the uh you know little little spirit guide that we have here our little animal guide is my little wally wally toe and actually that's a picture of him when he was just a kitten which is why he looks a little more white than he does now you know he's a little bit darker in color um because as they get older, they get a little darker. Uh, but anyway, there's the backs of my cards and there's the beautiful gilded edging. Um, and I have a little bit of gold foil on the front as well with some sacred geometry. But before, I mean, I still use this for meditation. Um, you know, and these are different sites from all over the world, which is, were donated by uh, our beautiful members of our community. And, um, you know, so I was using it for, you know, healing work and, you know, inner and like introspective work and kind of tapping into the energy of that area, which I still do. And I do it for meditation and I do it for, and I pull a card as well. You know, I pull different, different decks, different cards uh, for the healings that I do. Um, but now when I use it for daily draws, I'm reading with it kind of like I would read an you know, other oracle decks like you know i i was using it for a lot of like it's it's different like it's interesting you can use it to go deep like if you want to do some like shamanic journeying type stuff you want to do some deep healing but also if you're just looking for a quick message of the day i've kind of figured out how to do that with my own deck and i'm like oh <laughs> like it's interesting when you're learning how to do things with like this new with like something that you've created so it's it's been pretty cool Plus, a lot of people who have bought this deck have told me, oh, I've been using it for this and this and this. Some people have been using it for spirit communication, and I hadn't thought about using it for that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's just so cool. So I'm trying to use it for that. So anyway, um, yes, it's a deck that I created, so it's a forever fave, but um, it's even more of a fave now because I, I am finding so many different ways to utilize it. I mean, I thought I had already thought of a lot of ways to use it, but now that there's more, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> 
And the last deck that I have for August 2019, I actually keep in this beautiful little pouch, which was created by a wonderful subscriber. Her name is Yasmina. So hey! <laughs> and um, yeah, so she, she sent this to me. Um, it's an Artemis bag. I thought it's so cool. Um, but it's protecting a very old deck that I have, which was gifted to me um, in August. And it's a Smith weight deck. And this was gifted to me by my uncle. This is the 1961 version of the Smith weight deck. Um, and it has much more meaning to me because it is a gift from my uncle. You know, it was his deck, uh, his best friend, one of his good friends, uh, gave him his first tarot reading with this deck and then gifted it to my uncle. And then my uncle kind of, you know, used it for a little while and then gifted it to me. And then I used it to give him his second ever tarot reading. So he got his first tarot reading back in the seventies and then he got one from me right here in 2019. <laughs> um, and then I think his buddy ended up getting this uh, second hand um, in the like late 60s. So yeah, this this deck's from 1961 and then somebody put it in like a garage sale, late 60s. His friend picked it up, used it for a while, gave my uncle a reading, gifted it to him. My uncle held on to it for a freaking long time and gifted it to me. So I, yes. So this deck is much older. Um, I looked on eBay and I guess there are other copies of it that are probably in, well, the box being in a lot better condition. And this doesn't have the little white book anymore. Um, it's been lost somewhere in time, but the cards themselves are still pretty good. I mean, some of the pink has faded, but whatever, it's for 1961, like, what do you want? <laughs> um, but I have enjoyed the readings from this. I think the readings have a deeper connection because I have a deep connection with the person that gave it to me. Um, I try not to say that my uncle Joe is one of my favorite uncles because I don't want to like, you know, diss my other uncles that may be watching my YouTube channel. <laughs> I love all my other uncles too, but you know, uh, when I, when I get to talk like woo woo stuff, you know, my uncle Joe, <laughs> you know, my, me and my uncle Joe are like that. But anyway, um, so yeah, I, I love a dish deck. <laughs> All right. So that's it from me, spiritual homies. That was everything for my 2019 August faves. Uh, like I said, August was crazy busy as well as now that we're in September, September is going to be busy as well. I'm hoping by like August, November, December, things might kind of chill out a little bit, you know, since I, I won't have as much going on you know i will just have my spiritual biz and i will have my teaching stuff going on but you never know what'll pop up you never know what adventures are lying ahead and waiting for me in the future so we shall we shall see and yeah so uh if you have any comments or questions about the stuff that i showed you or maybe you want to ask me questions about um my rose bushes maybe you have roses and like your you want to you want to talk you know <laughs> you want to talk flowers i will talk flowers with you uh you know because i am little miss greeny over here and uh yeah so if you guys dug this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up don't forget to click subscribe and don't forget to click that ding 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 notification bell for more videos just like this and if you want to catch a reading from me maybe you would like me to use my uncle's deck <laughs> Just head over to www.kittensweightsandtarot.com where there is also a link to get my Wally's World Oracle um, on my Etsy shop as well as my bracelets here. My Wally's World Oracle has free shipping in the United States, the Estados Unidos, and um, you can get my room and body sprays, you can get my healing salves, and you can get my Goddess of the Rose Beauty Salve, which I am so smitten with. <laughs> This is going to be like my forever salve for my face. And uh, yeah, and if you want to send a little love my way, then head over to patreon.com slash kittens, weights, and tarot, where you get monthly crystal grids, weekly readings, uh, yearly readings for people who have little anniversaries uh, on Patreon with me. And I have uh, spiritual live streams, like mediumship live streams, and just like some talkie talkie live streams. I have um, some uh, card pulls and card spreads that I make uh, specifically for my Patreon peeps. Um, 
unfortunately I think I missed my my live stream for August because it was so crazy so I might have to do double live streams in September for my patreon peeps but anyway that's it for me spiritual homies I will catch you later peace love and chicken grease peace out